Hello, I'm Christine Mundo. It's good to have your company. A former commander in the notorious Ugandan rebel group, Lord's Resistance Army, has been convicted of war crimes and crimes against humanity at the International Criminal Court. Dominic Ongwen was found guilty of 61 charges over a reign of terror in the early 2000s. His crimes include murder, rape, sexual enslavement, and the conscription of child soldiers. He had denied all the charges. Ongwen surrendered to U.S. Special Forces who were hunting the LRA's founder in early 2015. He will be sentenced at a later date. He faces a maximum punishment of life imprisonment. You have noticed that I skipped... This is Dominic Ongwen. This trial has been years in the making, with thousands of witnesses providing testimony. Ongwen was a senior commander in Joseph Kony's Lord's Resistance Army after having been abducted himself by the group in his youth. Kony founded the group in 1988 amid widespread ethnic fighting in Uganda. The group committed rape, mutilation, torture and murder as it moved across Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo and the Central African Republic as well as South Sudan. The International Criminal Court also heard hours of recordings of commanders ordering atrocities. LRA leader Joseph Kony is still at large, but the group is just a shadow of its former self now. Ongwen's trial has been a chance for victims to confront an ongoing trauma, the effects of which are still felt today. And my first guest today is a former child soldier in the LRA and has since become an activist. Innocent Oponya joins me from Gladbach uh, here in Germany. Welcome to DW News Africa, Innocent. I just want uh, to begin by asking you how you were recruited uh, by the Lord's Resistance Army. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I was abducted like they did to a lot of kids in northern Uganda. They come in the middle of the night, force you at gunpoint to join their movement. So I was forced at gunpoint with my shirt removed to work with them. Besides my dad, the same night I was abducted is the same night my dad was abducted. Unfortunately for him, he couldn't make it. and was killed that same night. I was forced to move with them to South Sudan where I joined the rest of other child soldiers and other soldiers fighting for the LRA. And that's how I became a movement. Tell us about some of the atrocities that, that you saw in your time with the LRA. All your nightmares, everything you can imagine happened within the LRA camps. From people being stepped on, just in a line of soldiers stepping on one child or one child soldier who disobeyed the command until he dies, to light bullets in battlefields, to all kind of beating and punishment, when they find you listening to radios and the amnesty broadcasting program so that they always assume you are going to escape if you listen to these uh, radio programs. So it was really almost every kind of punishment you would find with the LRA. But the worst that totally stood out was how they raped so many young girls that we were forced as child soldiers to abduct and then the rebels choose and use as their, uh, their wives. Dominic Ongwen, uh, he's just been convicted at The Hague uh, for crimes he committed as, as commander of the, the LRA. How would you like to see the justice system deal with people like him? You know, I would, I would be an hypocrite if I tell you that I would judge him harshly because I once was a child soldier myself and the community welcomed me back. They didn't judge me. Dominic, Dominic was abducted at the age of 14, as I, I learned. And of course, he fought the war that he also didn't understand like I did. He was forced against his will. So that is a point where I feel pity for him, where I would say he deserves forgiveness, the same amnesty that I was given. On the contrary, he grew up, he grew old, and he had the ability to escape. But instead of escaping, he chose to lead his soldiers, the LRA, to go and carry out mass massacre in different camps, like in mm. Bajule in 2013, where they killed 115 people right. one night. And in Lukori, Lukori they killed in 2004, they killed 69 people in one night, in different styles, using machetes, burning alive in grass touch arts, and doing all kinds of activities under his watch. 
innocent. Them, they killed 100 and other people. Right, innocent. What have you done to cope with your past? After I escaped the LRM war, I joined the World Vision Rehabilitation Center, where at first I didn't like it because I was forced to go there. But that turned out the most important thing that happened in my life. Because through the rehabilitation center, I was taught the value of life, the meaning of forgiving and moving forward. The fact that I could still do more in my life. And since then, I vowed not to keep quiet, but to speak for different children who are still stuck in different wars that they don't understand. And that's why I've grown strong to be an activist for the voiceless, mostly children in war areas. So what helped me most was sharing with people coming out and sharing the past that I really did not want to face again. And that is getting into reality and making peace with my past. And through that, I realized, yes, some people judged me when I started doing it, and some people felt sorry for me, but both of them were not what I was seeking for. All I was seeking for was a spiritual peace thing where I get to a point and say, this happened and I have to live with it, but I should make sure it doesn't happen to another child again. All right, that is Innocent Oponyo. He's a former LRA child soldier who's now engaged in activism, as he's been telling us. We appreciate you coming onto the program. Thank you, Innocent. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, Ongwen pled not guilty. His defense argued that he himself was a victim because he had been abducted by the Lord's Resistance Army as a young boy and suffered psychological damage as a result. The judges rejected this defense. Let's have a listen to the presiding judge, Bertram Schmidt. The overwhelming evidence paints a picture of Dominic Ongwen as a person in full possession of his mental abilities. He's described by his subordinates as an extremely capable fighter and commander whom they loved to follow. He planned his attacks carefully and assessed the risks together with his officers. The evidence also shows that Dominic Ongman was not in a situation of complete subordination vis-à-vis -vis Joseph Kony, but frequently acted independently and even contested orders received from Joseph Kony. He was not a puppet on a string. I'm now joined by Oriam Nyeko. He's a Human Rights Watch uh, Africa researcher based in Nairobi. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, it's great to have you here. What do you make of the judges dismissing Dominic Ongwen's defense that he himself was a victim because he was once a child soldier? Well, I, the, what I took from that was the, the idea that um, he, the, the evidence that was presented during the trial was that he was Wang Wen was very calculating and made uh, decisions that uh, he should be held accountable for uh, to um, commit some of the abuses that um, his brigade and uh, he himself individual, individually committed. Um, my interpretation was that it, it wasn't so much about him being uh, formally abducted himself, but about the fact that he made those decisions as an, mm. as an adult who had, was fully aware of what was going on. Right. I mean, we, we have to point out that this is the first time that the crime of forced pregnancy is considered by the ICC. How significant is that? I think it's very significant because it takes cognizance of um, the impact of sexual and gender-based violence in conflict. Um, and that was one of the, really, the, 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 the big factors of what the, the LRA did during the, the 20 years in which the, the conflict raged. Um, we heard Innocent talking about uh, girls as, he, as young as 12 being forced into marriage and forced to have children. And this is something that really characterized that one. It's obviously hugely important that people be held account to account for those kinds of crimes. The, the founder of, of the Lord's Resistance Army, uh, Joseph Kony, he remains at large. Uh, Dominic Ongwen is really the only one to have been convicted uh, in a court of law. Would you say that justice is far from being served? I think justice, as far as the conflict in northern Uganda is concerned, is, is a very complex thing. Um, there's many different dimensions to it. Uh, criminal... Uh, liability is one aspect of it, but there's also questions of reparations, of truth-telling, of 
uh, reconciliation, which which are all really important facets of the culture of the of northern of the people of northern Uganda, um, and all of, some of those things haven't been addressed, and of which it is the responsibility of the Ugandan government really to provide for. So I would say this is a very significant step uh, towards achieving some aspect of justice, but it's 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 in no way I think. Um, uh, representative of the full spectrum of what justice can and should be for victims of, of that war. All right, that is Oriem Mnyeko. He is Human uh, Rights Watch Africa researcher coming to us from Nairobi. Appreciate you being on the program. Thank you so much. Thanks.